Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all doing great. Hope you're all doing fantastic and that you're all having a great day. Don't forget to leave a like. It is free. It's easy. It's free. And it's also easy to do. It helps out the channel's algorithm. And it's also free to do. Isn't that insane? And without any further ado, let's jump right into it. This is a discussion that doesn't seem like it's going out of the door, the window, the house anytime soon. The optimism as I've been saying for like two months now, is back in the cryptocurrency space. It's wonderful to see. I, I, I would assume that everyone would agree with the words that I'm saying. It's nice to see the optimism, uh, comma. I'm noticing a lot of um, really intense optimism that seems to constantly be making it into the news. That's a, that's a, that's a great way to say it. Uh, I, I, I want to say maybe around spring, somewhere around spring, there was like a slight bit of renewed optimism around Cardano, and then we had some stuff about Ethereum, and then most of the summer was kind of lull, if you don't remember, uh, but coming back with a vengeance is this number, and it won't quit, because I think that people think that uh, this is going to actually happen either within the next year, and I would dare even say less than five years. This is very popular news if you hadn't caught on. Recent discussions in the crypto community, particularly from a figure known as Crypto Tank, have reignited the debate about the potential for XRP and where its price is going to go. You might remember if you've been here for a while or if you haven't even been here for a while. A lot of people now, this year, have been discussing when the lawsuit's over, XRP's going to do A, B, and C. With the lawsuit over, as far as we can tell, there was even just another article. I don't have it here. It's not that it's redundant. It's because it makes sense. The entire lawsuit or near the entirety of the, the, the lawsuit from Ripple versus the SEC was surrounding the sale of XRP from Ripple. The lawsuit was against Ripple and not against the actual coin. So the idea being, because a lot of people are, the term's not even negative Nancy's, it's like annoying Anthony's. Sorry if your name is Anthony, I don't know what else to, to, to really put there. A lot of people are saying that they think that they heard rumors from their cousins, aunts, brothers, family mothers, grandmother who made pasta on Sunday, that the SEC might open up the lawsuit again, again against Ripple. And there was a lawyer who, like I said, the recent article who stated he was like, even if the SEC does open up the lawsuit, this is against the company. It is not about the coin. So the idea is, and it has been, once the lawsuit ends, basically XRP is going to go to $7. And then we heard a lot of 11 to $14. And you might remember a couple of months ago, there was a weird chatter. And I don't know where people are getting these exact numbers from. The chatter was for, well, no, it was 24 to a $27 XRP. If you haven't been here for a while, one of the beliefs, and we also had a video on this about three or four days ago, the one of the heads of the company Ripple, the guy with the hair, um, he recently said that XRP's price has to go up in order for it to actually be used. He said, if you're trying to send a million dollars 
through the chain, it's not as usable if you have to send a million XRP. It makes a lot more sense if the coin's price, he said, air quotes, is a million dollars and therefore you only have to send one coin. It adds to a lot of extra liquidity and it gets it to be more used and central banks and yada, 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 you get the idea. This discussion has been going on for years and I don't think it's ever going to end. And I, 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 this is, very, once again, very popular news. The discussion is about if XRP is or could reach 1,000 US dollars per coin. Crypto Tank argues that skepticism surrounding this target often stems from a misunderstanding of XRP's utility in the global financial system. There's a little thing right there. Okay, cool. According to him, to understand how XRP could achieve such high valuations, it's essential to examine its impact on global finance, particularly compared to existing systems like SWIFT. There goes that word again. About two weeks ago, we had a news story about XRP and SWIFT. There's been a lot of, and there is continuously a lot of speculation that at some point, the people from Ripple have been in contact with the Fed, who's in contact with the people from SWIFT, who's in contact with other world banks. And therefore, at some point, there's a global thing going on behind the background where uh, basically XRP is going to be used on SWIFT, and or and or XRP will be used to replace Swift. Swift has kind of been at the core of everything. Um, for those of you, you should all know what Swift is. I, I'm seeing so many people. What is? And I know someone's gonna tell me. Uh, Zell and Cash App. Why are those the only two ways to now send money within the United States? Like that's a real question. I was asking someone the other day if they had PayPal, and they were like, pay what? No, it's not 1998. Everyone here uses Zelle, and I was like, well, the well, the rest of the world doesn't. Swift is basically what your money is still transferred on, on like the global uh, payment system or payment rails that was created in the 70s, uh, without having to go any deeper than that, because it's like a very long story, and it's very long-winded. Swift which facilitates international bank messaging, handles a staggering five to seven trillion dollars in daily transactions. Now you understand why everyone's rushing after stable coins. If stable coins are doing 20 trillion dollars, that's where the money is. However, its messaging service doesn't include the actual settlement of these transactions, which can be costly and time-consuming. Currently, each SWIFT transaction can cost between 20 and 50 US dollars with settlement time stretching into days. By contrast, XRP can streamline blah, 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 mere sections, sections, seconds at a fraction of the cost. Yeah, no, but SWIFT is done by design. A lot of people don't understand that the way that things are is, is done on purpose. People think that it's a fault in the SWIFT system to cost that much. The people who control everything want to continue controlling everything because they control everything. Therefore, if they know that there's no other option that they're telling people or allowing people to use, of course they're going to want to charge you a huge sum of money. It's not like it's, oh my gosh, it's from, it's from the 70s, it doesn't know, like... No, it works as slow as they want it to work to make you believe that this is the only system that we actually have. Have you missed the last couple of years of us talking about crypto? We have a brand new payment system. Cryptocurrencies. Blockchain. They want the old system to stay the same. It's not, it's not like a fault. It is by design. <laughs> okay. Anyway... The discussion is, for those of you who basically don't know, is once again, there's speculation 
that at some point XRP is going to be used specifically by Swift and or take it over. Um, this is gaining traction, not in the realm of that we're hearing people from Swift or the Fed, but people within the XRP space are quite adamant that in this cycle or the next bull cycle, we are going to see a movement of XRP to brand new heights. And basically, it'll become so expensive to have one XRP, you know, several hundred dollars. It ends up getting adopted by institutions and, blah, 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 and all these other things like that. Um, I wish I could put into proper terms exactly how popular this news was because it keeps popping up all the time. And now it seems like people are like really serious about it. I'm not sure if it's because we're in October or because of the uh, wacky and weird price predictions for um, Bitcoin specifically. But as we have Bitcoin maximalists, we also have XRP maximalists. There are people who believe that XRP is going to be the coin that ends up being used in the future. That's the XRP to 1,000 <coughs> US dollars per coin. And yeah. Let's move on. Also in yay news, Robin Hood has announced the addition of three new coins for their users in New York. They have added Uniswap, Stellar Lumens, and Tezos. Uh, three coins that we almost never actually hear about anymore. Uh, Uniswap, isn't that the, the decentralized exchange? I believe Uniswap, I'm certain Uniswap was the first one, if I remember. And then it was Sushi Swap and Frog Swap and Toenail Swap and all the other ones that they have out there. Stellar Lumens, ironically enough, for those of you who don't know, was created by the guy who I believe created XRP. He gave XRP to the people from Ripple and then created Stellar Lumens. And Stellar Lumens, I mean, they, they I don't want to say they tried their darndest to do what they could to try and get people to use Stellar Lumens. There were rumors of a while ago that they had partnered with, was it Western Union? I don't remember. And then no one ended up using it. And I think the final smart contract in the blockchain was basically what you must remember this. This was, I, I remember I made a video on it and I was like, that's not going to bode well. The people from Stellar Lumens basically went on stage and announced at an event that they were going to be burning half of their coins. They didn't say why they were doing it, but we know why they did it. They did it in an effort to try and like get people riled up to use their coin. If you heard that half of Bitcoin had been burned and destroyed, Bitcoin price go high. If you hear the same thing for Ethereum or, I mean, especially XRP, especially with how many people love that thing. Stellar Lumens, I think it went up by 2% and then it continued falling. It's not a popular coin. It's not a popular chain. And they've also added Tezos. Also a coin we haven't heard from in like one or two years. Like there's been no Tezos news. Like even sometimes we have news like, oh my gosh, look over there, Shiba Inu, this, this happened. Or, oh my gosh, look at what happened to that coin that we also haven't heard from in 38 and a half years. And then it's like, nope, there's been no Tezos news, no Stellar Newman's news, and nothing from Uniswap as far as I can remember. Uh, but they're now added to the pool of coins that people in New York can use. That's kind of cool, right? I mean, right? That's the Robin Hood. Robin Hood has been in the news a lot lately. Has anyone noticed that? They're 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 they 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 seem to be trying to um I want to say the word pander uh to people who probably left their platform and or they realize that it's like bull run season, so they're trying to, you know, make those monies 
when you already had options of other crypto exchanges before, but that's that's neither there nor here. That's the Robin Hood has added three new coins for New Yorkers. And yeah. Let's move on. In I'm I'm shocked something something has happened. Oh <laughs> EOS EOS has successfully upgraded their network to something called Spring 1.0, introducing a host of performance enhancements and new capabilities. This was not pre-announced. This was never spoken about. We go over daily cryptocurrency news here. Yeah, daily. And I don't remember ever hearing about EOS having an upgrade. The last thing that EOS was in the news for is their staking. EOS also has a lot of coins, not as much as XRP or Shiba Inu or many other coins. But they announced that they had some kind of like a, a staking feature, uh, which is crazy for those of you who don't remember it. If you were one of the first people to stake your coins, I think you would get like a 60% annual return, like 60. I assume, now it's, it's, a, it's a couple of things. It's not too little too late. It's too late what's going on. There's been, I don't understand what's happening. EOS was the largest ICO, remember, they, 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 they garnered and... and um, Gained $4 billion for their ICO as the bull no, bear market of 2018, 2019 took hold. Uh, all the creators of this coin just kind of disappeared, I remember. And then in 2020, 2021, it was announced about, I, I think even Dan Larimer, uh, so, somebody with a, with a big name, uh, came forward and said that they were going to revive EOS. And I believe that the wallet addresses of the people who got four billion dollars, I think their wallet addresses were frozen. If, if, if I'm not like something something like that happened where basically the community was like, you've done a terrible job. You, you have no access to this money anymore. Then we were told that EOS was going to have a complete makeover. They were going to have A and B and C and all the other letters and all these new amazing things were going to happen. And then around... May, June, we heard about the EOS staking platform with all the big numbers and yada, yada, yada. And apparently now they've upgraded to something called Spring 1.0. Chief among these is greater performance, reliability, and speed delivered thanks to the new Savannah consensus algorithm. That means nothing to me because this was never discussed. The successful deployment of Spring 1.0 and the improved benchmarks it brings should support new use cases on EOS while enhancing user and developer experience, I'm sure. On the 25th of September, EOS completed its hard fork, which saw the network upgrade to Spring. Some upgrades are typically only obtained once a blockchain's lifetime, blah, 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 blah. blah. EOS required the support of numerous exchanges with its token, including Binance, it passed smoothly. Centralized exchanges typically suspend deposits and yada, yada, yada. What does it do? Why is the screen shaking like that? In the event, the hard fork passed without incident, Spring 1.0, Savannah prior to the event, month-long grace period. This was never announced. Okay. From the perspective of EOS users, the hard fork required no action. It was simple, waiting it out, spring deployed, blah, 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 blah. Okay, what does it do? One of the biggest benefits engineered by spring or antelope spring. Can we just give stuff normal names? Like this doesn't, to give the upgrade its full title, blah, 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 blah. This, this reduces transaction finality. Wow. Reduces transaction finality by 100x. Jeez Louise. And supports one second confirmation times. Okay. Other improvements Spring brings include enhanced cryptography through support for aggregate BLS signatures. That's not English. This will enable the EOS network to support more complex cryptographic operations. Cool. Let's see what ends up happening. 
I have, if we can be completely honest, I I, I want to say the term lost all faith, but it sounds a little dramatical. EOS could have easily zipped past Ethereum in 2018, but I really do think greed got the best of the creators. For those of you who don't know, you know how we have Tron and Cardano and Solana and Babana and all these other things. They're all meant to be, you know, rivals to Ethereum. You actually have to like be good to be a rival. So all the other coins. The point is, EOS actually had a chance. The issue being that once the market began to slide down in 2018, 2019, I think the creators, I think the creators were like, okay, the market's done. Cool, we can leave. And they took their billions of dollars as opposed to like staying like other projects did, like Cardano, like Ripple, like the people from Ethereum and built up their coin. And now it looks like EOS is like trying to claw its way back. You are six years too late. EOS had the speed. EOS had the airdrops. EOS had the staking before every other chain even thought about doing any of these things. So, cool. Let's see what ends up happening. I have zero, I mean, if I can be honest, zero hope for this. It sounds like it could be something fantastic or something really cool. You know, the future and technology and all that stuff. But when you, uh, <laughs> for those of you who missed the news, Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin, like, you know, three to five transactions per second. Bitcoin has NFTs already. Yeah, for those of you who missed that, Bitcoin is getting native staking. All the, the the purpose of the other chains was that they can do what Bitcoin can't. When Bitcoin has everything that EOS has, EOS is upgrading to be able to get the capabilities of what Bitcoin can currently do. When Bitcoin has native staking, when Bitcoin has smart contracts, and the, the, the other chain we were just talking about, someone's creating like a literal bridge, you know, air quotes, between Bitcoin and Ethereum to be used at will. EOS had the chance to literally become the number two coin in the market. Hope it was worth it. Anyway, that's the EOS Spring New Savannah Consensus Hard Fork. Wow, it sounds amazing. I can't wait for people to not use this blockchain. And yeah, let's move on. Also in Wee, apparently Shiba Inu keeps burning coins. For those of you who've been missing it or somehow forgot, Shiba Inu made a lot of coins. I think it's like one quadrillion. Like I, I think it. I think the number is, is actually one quadrillion. Um, however. They are the first uh, meme coin in the space to actually make so try to make something big of their project. They announced their own metaverse. They, I believe, they have um, what's the word? The, the 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 thing that has the not smart contracts. Basically, everything that every other chain has, Shiba Inu has. There's always like. Weekly, I don't bring it in the news because it's, it's like a little weird. It's like almost like like matrixy, like, ugh, like kind of okay. Where um the guy who created Shiba Inu, his name is Shai Toshi Kusama. Don't ask. Uh, keeps announcing that like big things are coming, big things are gonna take place, and all these other things for the chain. So it's like, oh, cool, awesome. Can't can't wait to see them. The main majority of Shiba Inu's news tends to revolve around burning coins. The idea being they have too many coins. It was made as a joke. And then for some reason, the people in the project decided that they wanted to take it seriously or wanted the world to take it seriously. So now they're on this like, and I will say the words never ending crusade to try and burn more coins. Because, you know, if they had only made a billion or a hundred billion we can deal with that. But um one quadrillion is bananas. I think wasn't I, I think half I think half of the supply was given to Vitalik Buterin, which I think he I, I think he also subsequently burned, like like burned, like sent to a wallet address and burned them. 
Um, and then the other coins are on this like march to try and burn more and more. So the significance, if you will, is that this is a very popular project. It's not a like by any means. This coin is very popular. It's far more popular than Dogecoin. It's in the news quite often. They have an actual ecosystem. Dogecoin is trying to create one. I don't think these people really care about creating anything. Shiba Inu also has like multiple other coins attached to it. It's a whole thing. The idea is, is that during the, the bear market, while prices were down, we were getting news daily that their burn rate had risen by 500%. 1,800%, 11,000%, these kinds of numbers. And once again, idea being that when we're in like the height of the bull run in 2025, that basically these numbers will kind of increase to like 700,000% and all these other, because if you know, if people are barely using chains right now, the idea is that when they actually use them, Therefore, you know, the numbers will go sky high. So the news today is that Shiba Inu's burn rate rose by, th that's, that's kind of weird, rose by 33,000%. That is 33, comma, 000. It said highlighting its bullish momentum and significant market impact. A lot of people love this coin. Like it's kind of whatever. I don't have to go over it. The point is, you you understand so cool it's nice to you know if we can if we can be honest here it's nice to see a project in the news that's actually doing something with their coin and their marketplace and their ecosystem because there are a lot of other ones that um that don't i still find it quite surprising that shiba inu's in the news so shiba inu's in the news even a little bit more than ripple and xrp are like actually though like it's you know it's kind of a interesting is the word that I'm going to say. Yeah. Methinks that's going to do it for this video. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope you're all finding time to take out for yourself. Hope you're all having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.